Two weeks left in the regular season, an AFC East title under your belt. This would normally be the time the New England Patriots would rest players and gear up for the playoffs, but not this team. They have a first round bye to secure. Step one, a big win against the Houston Texans. You can check that off the list. Step two, a matchup against one of the best defenses in the league. The San Francisco 49ers would be awfully nice if Tom Brady had one of his top receiving threats back for that one, but don't count on it. Rob Gronkowski was back on the practice field today. Good news, but don't count on him being back for Sunday night's matchup. He's still expected to miss at least a few weeks as he recovers from his broken forearm. Worry not, Pats fans. Plenty of receiving threats for Brady to go to, including Wes Welker. He's on the brink of history. Five more catches and he'll have 100 on the year. His fifth season doing so. No one else in the league has ever done that. It's an honor you would think deserve, deserves high praise. Bill Belichick says, sure does. And he'll be able to go in, out there and do it week after week um, against different, all the different coverages, all the different matchups that we see and all that. Uh, credit to, like I said, Wes's ability, but also his, his toughness and his durability. I'm just, you know, trying to concentrate on, on my job and what I have to do to, you know, help the team win. And, uh, you know, that's what it comes down to. Now, is it just me or has there been a serious lack of trash talk this season? Of course, the Pats, they don't get into that, but the Niners are giving us some gossip. NFL sack leader Alden Smith on the Patriots offense. He says we can stop them. You got to think that's bulletin board material. Here's Belichick's thoughts on Smith's remarks. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't put any points on the board or it doesn't make any blocks, tackles, yards or anything else. It'll come down to how the teams perform on Sunday night. I mean, that's really what it's about. The rest of it's just good for you to work with. He's a, he's a great player. He's a, he's a great pass rusher and uh, he's in on every down for for uh, run, stopping the run as well. He's a, he's a great player. For those optimistic about the NHL labor talks, I might be jumping off that bandwagon if I were you. After a stalemate of offers and counter offers between the league and the players union, it appears the next step may be legal action. As if things couldn't get more contentious, the league is reportedly filing a lawsuit against the Players Association for negotiating in bad faith. This means decertification is your word of the day. That is what the Players Union says they might do in order to file antitrust claims. Hopefully it's all just a bunch of posturing, but bottom line, the two sides are mad at one another. Can't seem to make heads or tails about this Celtics team. Nothing good to feel about. Sure, double overtime wins as we saw Wednesday night are exciting, but not very reassuring either way. Momentum is momentum and they look to carry it into their next game on their Texas road trip against the Houston Rockets. A moment of silence was held at all NBA arenas for those lost in the Newtown, Connecticut tragedy. We're going to pick this one up after a loose ball. Rajon Rondo slows things down. The Jeff Crean train is coming in, stopping at the station for the huge dunk. But it's all Houston dominating the second half. Loose ball recovered by James Harden. Nails the deep three-pointer. Harden, 21 points after this game. A very emotional Kevin McHale after losing his daughter just a week and a half ago to a battle to lupus. The Rockets win 101-89. Kevin Euclid to the Empire. Uh, sorry, I mean the Yankees. It became official today. T's were crossed, I's dotted on the one year, $12 million deal. Euclid said today, quote, I never thought I'd be on the other side of the rivalry. Yankees GM Brian Cashman says Euclid will be the everyday third baseman until Alex Rodriguez is back from his hip surgery. Between A Rod and Euclid, the Yanks have $40 million invested on the hot corner next season alone. In other AL East news, the Toronto Blue Jays are on the verge of another huge deal. The trade is going to be closing in on a deal with the Mets to get reigning Cy Young winner R.A. Dickey. And that is your sports. There's a new prince in Detroit. This offseason, the Tigers made a splash by signing Prince Fielder to a nine-year contract, and it's for $214 million. That kind of cash brings a lot of pressure to perform. I mean, I can't complain. I'm having a great time. Can't be perfect, but you can try to be, so I'm just trying to get better at all, every part, and then one day I might be good at everything. <laughs> Prince may not need to be perfect. The current Tigers lineup is formidable, to say the least. In addition to Fielder, the Tigers have all-stars in Miguel Cabrera, Alex Avila, and Brandon Inge. But it isn't just about what Fielder can do on the diamond. It's also about his approach to the game. 
you know, he was somebody you could count on every day to be out there, and he wasn't just uh, throwing his glove out there. He was out there 162 days, and he gave you everything he had every day, and uh, I think that speaks volumes for, uh, you know, one of the, arguably one of the best players in the game. And there's a great argument to be made for Prince. Last season, he was in the top five in all of baseball in home runs, RBIs, on-base percentage, and slugging. These numbers and his leadership can only be a positive for him and the Tigers. Uh, you know, he was great to play with. He was a blast to watch, and uh, I'm sure he's going to do big things in Detroit. The Detroit Tigers were just one game away from a World Series appearance last season. The addition of Fielder now puts only one thing on this team's mind, a World Series title. You don't want, uh, you know, you wouldn't want people saying you have no chance of getting there. So, yeah, I think that, that pressure comes with it, and uh, it's actually good pressure because, you know, if people expect you to win the World Series, you should expect it yourself. So I think uh, we're just going to go out there and work hard and see what happens. The Tigers last won a World Series title in 1984. That's the 10th longest championship drought in all of baseball. Prince Fielder aims to change that. With the Tigers in Lakeland, Florida, I'm Ross Lippman for WEBN. They say that the mark of a championship team is resiliency, an ability to overcome great deficits. The Patriots, they did that tonight. The greatest comeback in regular season history but they weren't able to get the win. A dominant performance from the San Francisco 49ers. It was a tale of two halves, really. The defensive pressure on Tom Brady, key. Alden Smith didn't get a sack, but he got pressure, resulting in several turnovers. Bottom line, when you give up four turnovers, you're not going to get the win. You know, it was, it was execution. It wasn't like there was a magic formula to what we were doing. We just stopped, you know, killing ourselves. So we just can't turn the ball over. We can't you know, miss plays that we have opportunities that. So we hit a few of those, and that's why we moved the ball. Playoff picture now for the Patriots. They sit in the third seed in the AFC. That means no home field advantage, no first round bye. Some things are going to have to change. Currently, the Broncos and the Texans sit above them in the AFC playoff picture. Reporting from Gillette Stadium, I'm Ross Lippman, Fox 25. Say you're Bryce Harper or Justin Verlander. You're one of the biggest stars in all of baseball, but it didn't start out that way. Someone had to discover you. Guys like this. The backbone of any ball club has to be the scouting system. This is 87-year-old Tom Giordano. He's been a professional baseball scout for over 60 years, and he knows talent when he sees it. It's very important that you have to have Good scouts who recognize talent with projectability, not what they just show now. Not every scout is as, well, seasoned as Giordano. Mike Ziegler serves as a scout for the Oakland Athletics. While he may not be as old as Tom, his eye for talent is just as keen. Uh, once you get down to it, it's, it's just watching baseball and and uh, having an opinion and a conviction about players and evaluating them. Outside of the obvious physical tools, there's a lot to be said for makeup and character and work ethic. You're just always looking for guys that can bring a lot of upside. For Ziegler, that upside has come in the form of some of the best players in today's game. A lot of guys, are Verlander and Prince on this field right here, um, Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, obviously, young guys like that, but uh, there's too many to be named. Giordano is no slouch in uncovering great talent. He has a name or two to pull out of his hat. Well, without going too far back, follow my name of Cal Ripken Jr. I mean, he was truly outstanding. Now that's what you call projecting. Big win tonight here for the Bruins. They proved that not only can they outplay teams physically on the ice, they can also outpace them with the 4-2 win here tonight against the New York Islanders. Something we haven't seen the Bruins do this season was a come-from-behind win. They got that here tonight. Something we've seen a lot of, to the surprise of many, is Dougie Hamilton. The junior player comes up to the big leagues, and he's playing a lot. 37 minutes, two assists. Claude Julian and the rest of the team spoke about how they're really pleased with Dougie's performance so far this season. Now he's playing with a lot of confidence. The guys that he's playing with have been extremely helpful with him on the ice. Oh, you know, it's, it's great. He's such a great player. I've, I've never actually seen him play before, but, you know, now him being out there in front of me, it's, uh, 
it's been good to see, and you know, he's just going to get better. I don't know if it's really sunk in that uh, I'm playing in the NHL. I think um, it feels so weird um, being out there and instead of being a, a kid watching and, and dreaming about it. The win puts the Bees at a tie atop the Northeast alongside the Ottawa Senators. They'll pack their bags and make their way down to North Carolina for a one-game road trip against the Hurricanes. We're at the TD Garden. I'm Ross Lippman, Fox 25 Sports. It's just like the Disney movie. The Chicago Blackhawks, if you will bear with me for a minute, are the Hawks from the Disney classic, the Mighty Ducks, a powerhouse team dominating their league, and the Anaheim Ducks are, well, the Anaheim Ducks. Let's see if the spirit of Gordon Bombay was alive and well as the Ducks took on the Blackhawks in Anaheim. 